Silk, Sonic and Leave the Door Open on BBC Radio Oxford. It is 5.21. It's Friday and you know what happens on a Friday. It's time to bring on our movie critic Van Connor to talk about the new movies that are out today. Uh, and I quite like the fact we just played Bruno Mars because he's, uh, he's on a video call with me right now and he is literally wearing a suit jacket that Bruno Mars would fit into very nicely. It is Van Connor. Good evening, Van. I, you know, I, I don't think I could fit into one of Bruno Mars's suits, though. The man is, man is a lot more slender than I am. But, uh, but I would very much relish the opportunity. But thank you very much, Mr. Boss. Nice to know you appreciate my efforts to dress up for a children's birthday party. But you know what? We have got a Texas Chainsaw movie to talk about this week, so it kind of works for that as well, if we're being honest. Yeah, However, yeah. I believe we're going to talk about Dog First. Yes. Which is, uh, this is one you actually get to leave the house for, because we've got, we've got two this week. One you stay in for, one you go out for. We'll start with the one you go out for. Great. Channing Tatum is back, and he He's, he's going to try directing for, oh. very, for the very first time. Co-directing, in fact. And uh, he is, uh, he's also um, he's, he's produced this, uh, this. He's helped in the story. It is reportedly based on his relationship with his, uh, his own actual dog. Um, and presumably his time filming G.I. Joe uh, Rise of Cobra because it's about a burnt sort of kicked out of the military soldier who's given a chance to get back in. He's overcoming an injury. He shouldn't actually be trying to get back in as we're told several times. Um, and he's then given the chance to get back in if only he will do the military this favour of taking an unruly military, jo- military dog who served his unit um, all the way cross country to that dog's handler's funeral. The handler has been killed while on deployment. He's been Uh buried far distance away. The family would really like it if you could take the dog there. He doesn't like the dog. The dog doesn't like him. They're mismatched from the get-go, but they've got a road trip to survive together, Adam. How do you think this is going to go? If you've got any any hint of suspense in there, or you don't have any hint of suspense, uh, here's a clip. What? What is your deal, man? Come on. You're just slobbering all over my seats. <laughs> Maybe just take crazy down. Just like one notch. Just one notch, that's it. Maybe we could get along. And if we get along, maybe we could even have some fun and send Riley off right. Doesn't that sound nice, dog? I'm all you got. I'm it. It's just me. Turner and Hooch comes to, comes to mind. Yeah, 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 you're going down that similar kind of terrain with this, absolutely. And what what you get with this is what would happen if you asked someone with my warped sensibilities, like my warped personal sensibilities, the things I find fun, to go and make Turner and Hooch. And that's evidently what you've gotten by asking <laughs> Channing Tatum to do something similar. Because I mean, I loved this, but. I'm 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 I'm, I'm going to be honest. I I don't know how well this is going to play to other people. I thought it was great fun. I thought of a supposedly family-friendly Turner and Hooch riff, oh. you know, that also involved PTSD, drug-addled uh, group sex. I believe there's a Texas Chainsaw homage at one point involving a wrestler Kevin Nash. It is absolutely wow. bonkers at times, and a really extended attempt to, to mine deep comedy out of hipster culture. So is this? Unlike- is this- and gentrification designed to make you feel a little bit awkward while you're watching it then would you say uh, it makes you feel everything i mean i was crying by the end of this because obviously it's a dog movie so you know there's one of only three endings you can pick from you know there's only like three you can go with i'm not going to tell you which but uh you know I, I cried for one of the three reasons and you know but as well as that i i laughed i chuckled i i, I felt a bit of Whoa, you know get in there kind of there's a couple of decent little action set pieces the texas chainsaw homage i thought was incredible wow. like wow I mean, hats off to... I don't know who... Who green... Who rubber-stamped that for Channing Tatum? Who told Channing Tatum that was okay? But hats off to them. It was hilarious. It, it had absolutely no business being in a family film because it's a little bit too sinister. But it works. It works. And it manages to mine actual horror comedy mileage out of Kevin Nash. And yet this is a feel-good road trip comedy about wow. a man and a dog. It's never anything more than that with just these weird little asides. But it's got bags of charm. And having the... But all of that ample, you know, lantern-jawed appeal of Channing Tatum, you know, both physically and personality, you know, it works. It works well for this. It feels like the kind of thing he could have made in 2007 if he'd really wanted to. So I don't know why he's doing it 15 years later, but 
you know, he gets to co-direct it, and he's decent in it. He's, he's pretty good fun in it. The movie's quite charming. The dog is lovely, naturally. Lulu, God, love that dog. Anyway, um, j- joins a pantheon of cinematic dogs in recent years, <laughs> along with Buck from uh, from, the, from the Harrison Ford one recently. Um, but no, I, this is one. I like this a lot. Well, I, it's, I did like this a lot. It's great it's worth going out for. to have a movie that you love and wax lyrical about for hours and hours, which I'm sure you could by the sounds of it, but we haven't got time for that. We've got two minutes to talk about... Your next movie choice. Yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, as it's just called. This is a direct sequel to Texas to The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1970... Is it six, three or six? I forget. Um, now, given, a, given the Halloween 2019, 2018, 2019 yeah. uh, treatment where we're doing a sequel decades later. In this case, a group of gentrifying hipsters come to a small town. I don't know what it is with them this week. Hollywood has decided... South Park as well this week. Hollywood has decided this week, enough with the hipsters, we're done with them. They're going after them. This time, they're coming to to gentrify a small town in Texas and it turns out there's one house that's left occupied. Uh, Three guesses who lives there and what they plan to do. Here's a clip. So Harlow is a ghost town. We have a vision for this place. All it needs is young blood. I don't want to live here. This is a chance for people to start fresh somewhere. Somewhere safe. (gasps) Hey guys. You should see this. What are you doing in our house? You really shouldn't be here. Sounds like the Predator's in there, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's, do you know what? It, it does what it says on the tin. It'll appeal to, uh, if, you, if you've not really known the franchise before, this will appeal to people who are fans of Wrong Turn, for instance. Um, I think it's... It, it's certainly a darn sight better than the 2013 reboot called they tried with Alexandra Daddario, um, which, I mean, no one will remember that, me saying that out loud, which should tell you an awful lot about the movie. Um, but this is this is decent enough for the sort of wrong turn crowd. You don't need to have seen the original, necessarily, to, to sort of follow on. You can just drop into this one. It works on its own merits. But it does work as a sequel in its own right. So it's on Netflix from today, so you don't have to go out for that one. You can stay in. So you can either stay in and have a slash with Leatherface or go out dogging with Charlie Tech. There we go. Thank you very much, Van Connor, for sure. your movie reviews, and we'll be back with you next week. Till the next time, good sir. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>